Sir, can we start? Yes. Yes, sure. Yeah, we can start. Okay. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back once again to this Ocean Literacy Program. A warm welcome to our mentors, Dr. Sachin Joshi and Mr. Sunil Muridhar Shastri, sir. I hope all the everyone must have a very nice weekend. And after the weekend, today is the ninth day of our course on Ocean Literacy, Know Your Planet Beyond the Land. And as we are aware that on Friday, we started with the third part of the course. And Dr. Reshma Pitre made us familiar with the Indian coast and the coastal biodiversity of India. And our today's topic is island forts in the western coast of India. The session will be conducted by Dr. Sachin Joshi, Research Assistant, Department of Archaeology, Deccan College Postgraduate and Research Institute. Before the formal introduction, I'll request Sunil sir to address the participant and welcome Dr. Joshi. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Neha. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, also, thank you for joining today uh, on the ninth session of the Ocean Literacy Program of the International Ocean Academy, uh, International Ocean Institute, Ocean Academy, uh, India. Uh, it, is, it is a privilege to, to welcome uh, Dr. Sachin Zoshi. Uh, we are very delighted, we are highly delighted that he has uh, joined our resource team, as it were, uh, from this time. Uh, this is our third uh, sort of offering, as it were. We, we did this in last year in the month of March, and then again last year uh, in the month of December. And this is our third offering. And we are delighted that Dr. Zoshi has joined us. Uh, you will hear her introduction uh, about Dr. Zoshi from Sneha uh, very, very soon. Uh, before that, uh, I just want to say a few words about the International Ocean Institute, uh, about my association with them, and also uh, my association with the Terror Policy Center. So uh, just to very quickly recap, uh, the International Ocean Institute was founded by my mentor, uh, my guru, uh, Elizabeth Manborghese, in 1972. I came in touch with her in 1982, 10 years later, and I have been in touch with the International Ocean Institute uh, since 1982 for almost, well, over 40 years now. And uh, unfortunately, Elizabeth Manborghese died in 2002, but it was her dream, uh, or it was her vision, as it were, uh, in those days, before the days of, you know, working from home and all that, so, you know, Zoom meetings and all that. She wanted to have a virtual university whereby people could benefit from the knowledge and experience of uh, the people uh, and people who are interested in the ocean uh, issues, uh, whether they were uh, experts or not, uh, like they should all benefit from the knowledge of uh, the other experts in the field of, field of ocean governance and ocean management, etc. cetera. So, so that was her idea. And uh, last year uh, on the 20th anniversary of her death, uh, the International Ocean Institute decided to launch this new ocean academy and also this has been launched in many countries in the world, including in India. And I'm the titular director of the IOI uh, Ocean Academy India. And uh, uh, we decided to launch these programs uh, free of cost to, at, uh, at the point of delivery. So there is a lot of work involved in this. Much of the work is done by our partners at Air Policy Center. So before, any, before taking any, any more of your time, uh, I would like to again, Welcome Dr. Zoshi on my behalf, on behalf of the International Ocean Institute, and also on behalf of Dr. Vinita Apte, uh, Vinita who's been our partner uh, and the Terror Policy Center and, and the entire team of the Terror Policy Center, including of course, Sneha, uh, who is here every time. So thank you and over to you Sneha. Thank you, sir. I take this privilege to introduce to you all, Dr. Sachin Joshi. Dr. Sachin Joshi has an experience of over 17 years. His research activities include discovery of historical forts Panalgar in May 2006, discovery of an historically important fort Mohangarh in May 2008, and the discovery of three important forts Manik Durga, Kasar Durga, and Navde in May 2010. 
exploration and excursion activities at various sites like chol in west coast of maharashtra mavshi khand khand sambhre uh, caves chinchini and mazra valley sir has a total of 32 publications in his name and has also published five books he serves as a member of various maharashtra state government committees so is also the work is also working as a coordinator on marathi vishwakosh project conducted by maharashtra government since 2017 so has conducted a project on architectural studies of medieval forest purangarh and is currently working on a study of chronologically developments in gateways of medieval forest and deccan a architectural approach it is a pleasure to hear from sir on a very different topic for the first time in our entire course thank you so much sir for consenting to be one of the educators for this course so without further ado i'll request dr joshi to start with the session island forts in the western coast of india over to you sir thank you let me share my presentation first of all thank you for inviting me uh, for this uh, lecture on uh, island forts near the west coast of maharashtra uh, actually i am working from last 25 years on forts in medieval deccan but my uh, phd topic is concentrated on the coastal forts on the west coast of maharashtra uh, the topic is uh, study of defense architecture and geopolitical significance of coastal and hinterland forts in kokan on the west coast of maharashtra uh, in this topic i have covered uh, 23 different creeks on west coast of maharashtra the rivers which originated from the uh, western ghat and flows to the west and uh, merged into the arabian sea so the forts built on the mouth of the arabian sea and the hinterland of the river so my study area is the forts located on the west uh, on the mouth of the creek and on the hinterland of the um, that creek so during this uh, field work i have done i have uh, explored more than 73 forts situated on 22 different creeks and i have uh, done the uh, research architectural analysis and the, its geopolitical significance during my phd work uh, this is about my phd but uh, today we are only concentrated on the island fort on on the west coast of maharashtra uh, before initiating this uh, main topic island forts um, i would like to uh, introduce the history in a very short the history of fort and fortification so the basically first fort was observed archaeologically or the archaeological evidences of first fort is observed during the harappa and mohenjodaro period so the this is the earliest archaeological evidence of fortification bastion gateway so these all these elements are found during the excavation at harappa mohenjodaro kalibangan lothal dholavira there are many different uh, harappan site more than 1400 sites discovered today uh, which is which were from um, harappan civilization so out of 1400 uh, 900 sites are in uh, india 420 sites are in pakistan and other sites are in afghanistan and some part of balochistan so the first fortification and the gateway and bastions are found at harappan civilization 
after that after uh, approximately uh, 2000 years uh, or 1500 years the early historic fortification is observed during the satwahana period in maharashtra there are many uh, satwahana sites or uh, early historic sites like uh, na ashokan period or uh, 16 16 mahajanapada period so these sites have a fortification wall around the settlement and these sites were found from 600 bc to up to 400 ad so in india uh, in maharashtra this is a site name of the site is pauni it is a medieval fort pauni is located at the site but after uh, the excavation we found the kan college has done the excavation and state archaeology also uh, one of the uh, uh, member of our excavation team and asi also uh, one of the contributor so three agencies excavated this site and the date of that site goes back to 600 bc and this is a fortified site from uh, a really historic period similarly adam and ter are also uh, another historical fortified sites located in maharashtra uh, then pauni is excavated in 1998 so today the location of pauni site is uh, in bhandara district yeah, and the name of the village is itself pauni uh, after that when uh, when the east rulers came to india in the uh, 12th century so they uh, bring their um, their architecture and uh, build many different forts in the uh, in india as well as in deccan but uh, before that there is a uh, different there are different dynasties in india which are hindu dynasties and their construction style is very different from the islamic architecture so at that time before 12th 13th century you can find the uh, architecture like uh, square shaped bastions gateways are also square shaped there is no arch in the architecture only square shape of bastion and gateways and uh, uh, also other elements are uh, found so i hold is a best example of ground fort in uh, karnataka is very close to hampi uh, uh, the date of ayore uh, fort goes back to 6th century ad uh, then uh, kakatiya dynasty kakatiya dynasty is uh, uh, located in uh, warangal city warangal is the capital of kakatiya dynasty in uh, 9th to uh, 12th century so they built a fort in uh, at warangal uh, if you can if you visit it visit the um, warangal today you can see the actual evidence of uh, different fort gateways uh, from kakatiya dynasty then shilahara dynasty rule uh, in the kokan and uh, some southern area of maharashtra like kolapur satara sangli so king bhoj built few forts like uh, panargad chenna rangra in 12th century and after that uh, alauddin khilji then tughlaq and then bahmani came to uh, the deccan and they built many different forts like uh, uh, nadurga paranda udgir daulatabad so the um, important or the architectural difference of their uh, construction is large size semi circular bastions hexagonal bastions or sometimes pentagonal bastions then double layer fortification wall then they place a, uh, uh, in the fortification wall there there are some places for firing the uh, guns in 15th century uh, ad the guns and cannons uh, came to uh, india before that very few quantity of cannons are seen in around the deccan but after 15th century when babur came to india uh, in that uh, deccan and he uh, introduced the uh, guns and cannons and large amount of cannons came to india and due to the uh, these guns and cannons the fortification bastions uh, are 
design in different uh, different ways earlier period they don't get any places for firing and guns and cannons but after the 15th century the uh, merlons and embrasures are kept for the firing guns and cannons uh, machicolation is also a, one of the important um, element located in the fortification wall after the 15th century uh, then the different variety of forts which are not found elsewhere in india are seen in maharashtra because of variety of landscape so this is about the basically forts located in deccan but island forts are completely different and the construction of island fort is uh, slightly similar to these forts but it is very difficult to build a fort on an island in that period when it that was not possible to build any bridge on the river so at that time some people went to the um, island and built a fort fortified uh, structure on that island uh, before initiating the study of, uh, of island fort uh, it is necessary to understand the different parts or different elements of fort and fortification uh, first uh, element is moat moat is basically used for uh, keeping the enemy away from the fortification wall so moat is normally found on uh, land fort it is not observed on the hill fort because it is very difficult to uh, excavate the hill and uh, make a moat around the fort there is only one example of the moat for the hill fort is daulatabad if there is no other example for the hill fort uh, uh, we excavate the moat around the hill fort then the main gateway main gateway is located in between the two bastions these two bastions are uh, used as a guard or watch tower or defense uh, part for that gateway then the emergency gateways are used for uh, the uh, emergency exit from the fort then the bastions different types of bastions are found on the fort uh, as i said earlier that uh, square shaped bastions any circular then um, uh, hexagonal pentagonal uh, so different variety of bastions are seen in uh, the medieval forts then uh, fortification wall Forti there are two types of fortification walls uh, first is found slightly tapered from the ground and other is exactly 90 degree from the ground then water tank water tank is the important part in the hill fort as well as in a island fort because without water you cannot survive on any any uh, places so hill, hill top is very different and um, it is necessary uh, to construct the fortification wall and water is the important factor in this construction and after that when you uh, survive on the fort you need a water for survival so water tanks are the important factor in uh, uh, any kind of forts this kind of towers were built by europeans when they reached to uh, india british uh, Portu uh, portuguese then dutch so they built this kind of bastion we can call it as a bastion but this is actually tower for uh, it is a like a service tower uh, for the protection of the fort uh, two towers are found at one or one is at vasai fort and another is at revanda fort still today uh, then the merlon and embrasures as i said earlier that embrasures are kept for firing the cannons and merlons are for guns in the uh, uh, marathi there is no different two words for merlons and cannon only one word is used as jangya jangya means it is came from the hindi word jang jang means uh, a battle so it came from jang so it is called as a jangya then moat uh, there are two types of moat from uh, on the uh, Deccan or on the coastline. You can see the uh, first photo, which shows the moat uh, on the coastal fort. 
the coastal folds are normally surrounded uh, by sea from three sides and one side is connected to the other land so there are the chances of uh, reaching the enemy from the land side so due to that that uh, this uh, this type of moat is excavated from the land side so you can uh, take the enemy away from the fortification wall height of the moat is around 15 to 20 feet from the base and after that the fortification wall rises uh then another type of moat is a um, moat filled with water normally in uh, daulatabad or uh, forts located on the plateau region of maharashtra like daulatabad hausa udhir paranda dharur so all these forts contain a lot of water in the moat but in kokan uh, you cannot find the water in the moat on rainy season also because they kept the slope from both side to drain the water so first type of moat is called as a dry moat and another is a wet moat see this is a coastal fort korlai this fort is located on the mouth of uh, kundarika river uh, near rezanda fort and this fort is called as a coastal fort because fort because it is surrounded from three sides by a sea water and one side is connected to the main line a small moat is excavated on this part of the um, fort to keep the enemy away from the fort uh, gateways there are different types of gateways uh, found in the deccan uh, i have uh, working on the same project that is the gateways of medieval fort because you can identify uh, the after identifying the architecture of the gateway you can identify the dynasty who built that uh, gateway because every dynasty like um, nizam shahi adil shahi bahmani qutub shahi they have their own uh, architecture so they built their forts and uh, we can easily identify their architecture after analyzing the different gateways of fort so i am going to document uh, 250 gateways of the fort during that this project and i completed the documentation of 200 uh, gateways of fort so first gateway and left side gateway this gateway is not built by using the stone it is actually excavated from the rock you can see it is clearly chisel marks are observed around around the gateway and uh, let's see the see the arch of the gateway arch is slightly different from these arches so these are the typical islamic arches and these are the uh, maratha arch this is the fort paranda and the arch of the ulatabad fort some gateways uh, are built during the maratha period or reconstructed in the maratha period and the uh, uh, inscription has been written on the gateways about the construction or for reconstruction of the gateway uh, if you have visited the uh, sihagad fort then uh, please visit the kalyan darwaza another uh, gateway of the sihagad fort there is a, an inscription on the gateway which stated that this gateway was uh, rebuilt during the maratha period by nana sahib peshwa uh, in uh, 17 uh, i think 41 something uh, so in some uh, some gateways are easily identified because of inscription so this is another style of gateway construction of gateway uh, british period gateway then this is a fort gateway of fort rohida Rohida Fort is located 50 kilometers from the Pune city, and the inscription written in the Persian and uh, Devanagari script, and the name of that uh, chief of the fort and also the dynasty uh, is clearly written on the gateway of the fort. So we can easily identify the architecture of that specific dynasty by using the uh, or by reading this uh, inscription. Uh, there are some emergency uh, gateways they kept on the 
fortification wall. Uh, in the earlier period, it means before uh, 12th, 13th century, these kind of gateways are not found in a large quantity on the gateway. But after uh, 14th, 15th century, you can find the small gateways for the emergency exit. If the um, chief of the port or the people trap inside the port, or it is very difficult to defend with the enemy, then you can um, pass from this uh, emergency gateway and uh, go outside the region of the port. So these emergency gateways are used in the medieval period. Then the bastion in the Harappan period, uh, you can find the square shape of bastions. After that, um, but in the Harappan period, the hill fort is not observed because they don't need the hill fort or those they don't need to uh, settle on the hill top. That's why the land fort type of fort is observed in uh, Harappan period. But when uh, there is there was a need to build a fort on the hill top, the shape of the bastion changes: cylindrical, square shape, pentagonal, hexagonal. So actually, this is a uh, uh, this kind of uh, construction is depend on the landscape of that hill. You cannot decide uh, how to build that. Uh, or, uh, uh, I, uh, I would like to build only um, square shape bastions or uh, semi circular bastions. If the landscape is different, then you have to build the bastion as per the landscape. Then fortification wall, there are two types of fortification as I said earlier that 90 degree from the ground to see the first photo. This wall is uh, exactly 90 degree from the ground and another is slightly tapered. There is approximately 75 to 80 degree angle is shaped in the uh, construction of this fortification wall. Uh, water tank. Um, Water tank is an important uh, part of the fort. Uh, Shivaji Maharaj, uh, uh, Shiv uh, there are eight ministers in the uh, Shiva cabinets of Shivaji Maharaj. Uh, so one of the ministers is a finance minister, and his name is uh, uh, his name was uh, uh, Ramchandra Banta Amartya, and he was he has written a document. The name of that document is uh, Arnya Patra. Adnya Patra, he mentioned in that, in that book that how to build a fort. This document is, uh, was written to understand how to construct the fort for Shivaji Maharaj's grandson. Um, and he, he wrote uh, that importance of water on the hilltop. So he said that sometimes uh, the spring which supplies the water gets dry at the time of war due to the firing of cannon or sometimes it gets dry due to the uh, tectonic movement or earthquake. So due to, uh, due to this problem you have to build more than one water tank on the port. So you can find many water tanks, uh, for example Sinagar. There are 45 different water tanks located on the Sinagar port. And all the water tanks are filled by water. So I have seen more than 500 ports, and on every port, I have seen more than more than one water tank. So these are the different types of water tanks. It is a, the first water tank is for um, storage of water. Then another is a pillared water tank. There are pillars for the water tank. Then uh, a lake. These lakes are uh, uh, constructed on the hilltop. Then open to sky water tank. Then another pillared water tank. These pillared water tanks were constructed um, uh, like the cave, excavation of any cave. Then series of water tanks are seen on various ports and uh, this is because of uh, storage of water, importance of storage of water. Then the places for weapons, uh, 
early in the earlier period before the invention of guns and cannons uh, bow and arrow and uh, is is a important weapon for uh, for the war so this is a part this part is called uh, in marathi it is called as charya actually it is a lotus shaped structure and you have to uh, uh, you have to uh, fire the uh, these um, bow and arrow or uh, throw the bow and arrow from this gap in between the gap of two petals but after when the um, guns and cannons reach to deccan or india uh, the use of this kind of structure is um, ended and uh, new construction in the fortification wall is started see the upper image there is no part of this this kind of structure and only small holes were kept for firing guns and the windows are kept for for the firing cannons so that this is a extreme or a different change in the fortification wall after 15th century uh, then there are two types upper fort and lower fort so every fort don't have the upper fort and lower fort it is basically depend on the landscape of that fort so rajgarh fort had a three different lower forts and one upper fort or raigad have one upper fort and another lower fort is called as pasad so it is basically depend on the landscape of that fort uh so come to the point of uh, island forts uh i have basically uh, done the research on the coastal forts in the kokan and uh, during the pa my phd i have done uh, the exploration and identified the different types of forts in kokan now uh, in this kokan region uh, there are seven different types of forts are identified during the exploration or phd research first is coastal fort Uh, coastal fort is surrounded by sea water from three, three sides, and second is the, the sea fort or island fort. Then fortified fort, uh, Chowl, Wasai, Revanda, all these are the fortified forts where the trading activity goes on. Then fortified factory, Revanda is a fortified factory located in the Raigad district. Uh, then fortified warehouses. Uh, Dutch warehouse is uh, was constructed in uh, around 16th century uh, by at uh, Bengurla in Sindhu Sindhu Durga district. So that can be a fortified warehouse. Fortified tower. Fortified tower is uh, uh, use uh, fortified tower is uh, actually. Um, i found this uh, type of tower see the middle image lower middle image uh, this is a fortified tower located in dahanu palghar district uh, then fortified settlement fortified settlement is located in wasai uh, you can found the various residential structures at uh, wasai fort and um, it is fortified by using different towers and bastions and different gateways around it uh it medieval kokan is uh, um, divided into actually three districts thane raigad and ratnagiri district and sindhu durg also uh, so the marine forts are commonly seen in uh, these four districts of maharashtra and uh, approximately around 118 forts are located in ratnagiri raigad and sindhu durg districts and uh, today uh, thane district is uh, divided into palghar and thane district so in uh, palghar and thane district there are around 45 different forts so all about around 165 forts are located in kokan uh this is a map of uh, thane district and uh, location of different forts uh, coastal as well as in the Underland ports are there. See, this is a list of ports in Thane district. There are 
major ports located in Thane district. Then Raigad district ports. There are 58 different ports, hill port, line port, sea port, coastal ports in Raigad district. So this is a list of different ports and their coordinates. Then there are 28 different ports in Ratnagiri district. The maximum ports are on the coastline or uh, on the mouth of the creeks. So this is a list of 28 ports. Then in then Sindhudurga district, uh, 30 ports are built in Sindhudurga district. This is a list of 30 ports. Uh, I have seen all the ports in all four districts, but I have selected only 73 ports out of 165 ports for my PhD uh, research. Uh, this is a, actually a list of island ports located near the west coast of Maharashtra. Andheri, Andheri located in Raipur right district. It was built by Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj in uh, 19, uh, 1680, uh, 1679. Then Kulaba, Kulaba also built during the 1678 by Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj in Raigad district. Then Sarjay Kot, Sarjay Kot is uh, uh, sometimes uh, it is doubtful that it was built by Shivaji Maharaj or um, Kanuji Angre. Since, uh, Admiral Tanuji Andre. So, exactly, we don't know the construction of the Sarjekot port. Padmadurga is built by Shivaji Maharaj. Suvarnadurga also, but Suvarnadurga, uh, Padmadurga, Sarjekot, Kulaba, and Khandari are in Raigad district. Then Suvarnadurga is in Ratnagiri district, built by Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Again, Sindhudurga also built by Shivaji Maharaj. There is a small port just in between the coastline of Sindhudurga and uh, our coastline of Maluan and Sindhudurga port. The name of that port is Padmagad. So Padmagad is also built by Shivaji Maharaj. Today there are only remains of Padmadurga, Padmagad. Uh, there is only one Vetai temple is located on the port and few uh, fortification, remains of fortification wall is there. Uh, then Janjira, Janjira built by Nijam Shahi dynasty and after that it was captured by Siddhi. Uh, it is located in uh, Raigad district. Then uh, Arnara, Arnara port is built, Arnara it was built by um, Gujarat Sultan in uh, 15th century. Uh, he had built only one tower on the island. After that, Marathas built, uh, Portuguese built a small port on that island. And in 1734, Marathas took that island uh, or captured that island and they built a new port on the island. In the name of that port is Arna. Uh, then, Panakot. Panakot is a small port built by Portuguese on a small rock. Actually. Uh, it is a very small port. Um, that means around the only 25 to 30 people can stay inside the port. And uh, at the time of high tide, it is very difficult to come out from the port. On, at the time of low tide, you can easily reach at the port. Then Undari. Undari is built by Siddhi or Jenjira, um, Siddhi. When Shivaji Maharaj started the construction of Khandari uh, port, the Siddhis immediately came and took the island of Khandari and built a small port on this on that island. So today there are many remains. I will show you some pictures of uh, Undari and Khandari port. Uh, let's start from the uh, northern part of the Maharashtra, uh, Palghar district. Uh, earlier it was a, a Thane district. So, 
Danda Creek. Danda Creek is a small natural creek. There is no river originate from the Sahyadri and reach to the Arabian Sea. It is a natural creek and there are two forts located on this natural creek. One is Kerwe and another is Pineport. Pineport, as I said earlier, that it is a very small port built by Portuguese. And another port, Kerwe, is a star-shaped port. It is also built by Portuguese on this Danda Creek. And another uh, creek is uh, Vaitarna Creek. Vaitarna River uh, originated in the Sahyadri near Nashik and reached to Arabian Sea uh, on the west coast of Maharashtra. So, on the mouth of this creek, Arnada Port was built in the medieval period. So this is a port, Kerewe uh, uh, or Pan Port. Uh, this port, you can see the construction of port or the places for firing cannons and guns. So this, this is a completely a, a Portuguese architecture observed in this port. And today there are, uh, this, is, this port is in very good condition. Uh, but at the time of low tide you can reach at the port. High tide it came under the water. See the water line on the port here. So this is the black color shows the water level came up to the here and then uh, yeah, you can uh, reach at the low tide. So the port was uh, built for specially defense purpose and uh, see the Marlon Embrager and there is no residential structure inside the port and uh, only as I said that uh, 20 or 30 people can stay inside for the defense purpose only. Uh, then uh, <coughs> Arnala Port. Arnala is located at the mouth of Vaitarana River. Uh, this is the bastion built by Gujarat Sultan first in 15th century. But he has not built a large size port on, this, on that island. This bastion is, was used as a search tower in the medieval period at the time of Gujarat Sultan. So the remains of the original small fort uh, built by Gujarat Sultan in 1516. So these remains are still on the island. You can see the uh, this uh, this is the place where this is written this Vetan Dev Mandir. The bastion is located here, and the, today a new fort was built by Marathas on that part of the island. So the earlier remains are at the end of or the south part of the island. So this is the inscription written on the gateway of Arnara Port. So this inscription has given the information about the construction uh, of Arnara Port in 1739 uh, and the name of the person who take the initiative of the construction of port is uh, Vajira first. So this bastion, uh, this the gateway is built in, in, in between the two huge bastions uh, which protect the gateway uh, and the Marlon's embrasure are kept on the upper part of the gateway to fire the guns and cannon. And some decorative elements are also seen on the gateway. The images of uh, Sharaba. Sharaba is a basically a mythical animal it is, uh, and um, this depiction of Sharaba is on the gateway of the port. Um, it indicates that the king of that, uh, that uh, port is as powerful as Sharaba. The story of Sharaba is, uh, Sharaba is actually a mythical animal. All of you know about the um, Story of Narasimha and Hiranyakashipu. When the Narasimha, uh, uh, Narasimha um, killed the Hiranyakashipu, then he moved into the um, uh, in the city or in the in that uh, period. So it was uh, these uh, people get threatened due to its aggressive nature of the Narasimha, and they pray to. Lord Shiva. 
so the lord shiva take the form of this animal and ended the uh, form of narsimha of vishnu and due to that the animal which is a powerful it was powerful at that period is sharapa which is actually mythical animal and the depiction indicates that the the king of that court is as powerful as sharapa so normally on every fort you can find the depiction of sharapa not only on the island fort but all the uh, forts also there is another gateway of uh, arnala fort area of arnala is approximately um, 15 acres and there of area is completely covered by using the fortification wall and height of the fortification wall is around 28 to 30 feet uh, <clears throat> water water tank is inside the fort and one uh, ganesha temple is also located just behind the water tank and there is there is another vishnu temple also located inside the fort uh, <coughs> in the raigad district uh, there are 58 forts located uh, and the 12 forts are on the creeks and interesting thing is uh, six island forts are located in uh, raigad district out of 11 six island forts are only in the raigad district andheri indheri kulaba then jenjira padmadurga and sarje fort so these are the six forts located in the raigad district the khandari fort khandari fort is located on an island so today the name of this island is kanoji angre island and the lighthouse is uh, lighthouse was built by the um, british in 1945 on that on that island uh, in the second picture this is a fort kunderi kunderi built by siddhis and uh, they retain this fort up to Uh, 1755. Uh, uh, After that, the Marathas took the control of the fort, and uh, 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 up to 1948, the fort was under the control of. Uh, uh, up to 1818, the fort was under the control of Marathas. After that, the British took the fort. Uh, then um, Ali Bagh fort is the third image. Uh, Alibar fort or commonly called as Kulaba. Kulaba means a fort which is inside the water. So Kulaba fort also built by Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, and after that it is a uh, naval base of Admiral uh, Kanuji Angre, and he had he built many uh, structures inside the fort, fortification wall, gateways, and uh, there are few canals also today. Inside the uh, on the fortification wall, uh, another small fort which is just beside the Kulaba fort is Sarje Fort. Uh, there is a small bridge was constructed uh, during the uh, Maratha period, late Maratha period, to connect the Sarje Fort and uh, Alaba Kulaba Fort. These are the two islands. Andheri and Undheri. Undheri is very close to the mainland, but Andheri is uh, around five kilometers from the uh, seashore. See the satellite image of Andheri port. Uh, this is a uh, this part. There are two uh, small hills on the island. On the I hear there is a lighthouse here, and on the another part. Uh, so today, this area, um, this area was under the um, Bombay port trust. So they built some structures inside the on the on the port. But it is a basically medieval port. The gateway uh, is not in a um, good condition. Today. The original gateway was fallen down, uh, so no one has the pictures of original gateway. I thought, um, I think this is the part where the original main gateway was built. 
but today there are only remains of gateway is there. This is a map of Hungary uh, code which shows the places inside the port and there are uh, approximately 22 bastions around the fortification wall and that time maybe the gateway was some, somewhere here on the part of the port uh, but today a small gateway or emergency gateway is still in a good condition in this fortification wall. Uh, there are three wells inside the port for the supply of water and one large size water tank excavated just below the lighthouse and all these uh, water sources are full of water up to um, for 12 months uh, the water doesn't dry in uh, uh, may or june, or june season and there are some remains of structure inside the port and few cannons or guns located on the fortification wall. There is one temple, uh, local um, deity, it is called as Vetar temple and uh, tradition is this is a Vetar uh, and the temple is built near the fortification wall here and uh, local people thought that they, uh, um, uh, they uh, took the they took the um, neck or uh, nose of um, swordfish and they offer to the Vetara as, as an offering. So this is a nose or nozzle part of the swordfish. They, you can uh, found the, uh, this kind of nozzle fish, uh, part inside the Vetara temple there. This is a gateway, emergency gateway at the port. These are the cannons um, during when the British took the port and they kept the few cannons on, uh, on the bastions. So you can uh, identify these cannon because of some symbols are on the surface of this cannon and some few um, inscriptions written on, the, on these cannons. So it is very easy to identify the British and Maratha cannons. Uh, see the water tank which supplies the water throughout the year. I have taken a uh, project uh, of documentation of canon in 2011 and at that time I have visited the first time on the uh, Hungary, Umberi and other island ports. So I document uh, more than uh, 260 canons on different ports. Uh, there are 12 ports located on the Khanderi Island. 18 cannons are at uh, Underi Island. 45 different cannons at uh, Padmadurga port. So I have architecture uh, or uh, detailed measurements have been taken during the field work. And uh, this is, these are the drawings of different cannon at Khanderi port. The next is Underi Port. Underi is uh, uh, located uh, near the third village. Third village is uh, uh, five to six kilometers away uh, north from the Alibag uh, city. So you can take a boat from third to reach the uh, Underi Port. But it is a very rocky island. So fishermen are not um, ready to come to show the I am in the report because uh, it is very difficult to uh, uh, keep the boat around the port because it's a rocky uh, island. But at the time of low tide, there are some chances of to reach port inside it. See, this is the actual image of the uh, in the report. Uh, this is a main gateway of Kundari port and some flooring is also observed here. You can reach the gateway from these two bastions. So where inside the uh, port, stepwell and few cannons inside the port. But today this stepwell gets or reservoir gets dry. Uh, and these are the drawings of cannons located on the uh, and in the report.
then the kulaba and uh, alibag or, or kulaba is commonly called as alibag fort but the original name is kulaba and sarjekot fort is just besides to the or on the east of the kulaba fort see the sarjekot fort and the alibag coast line in and behind that the ramdarne hill range This is the image of uh, Ulava Fort or Alibal Fort built by Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj in 1679. So the main gate, the highly decorated main gateway is there. The images of flower, flower is a symbol of prosperity. Then the images of uh, elephant, then Ganesha uh, image, and large, uh, big temple of. Uh, Ganesha is located inside the fort. This is another gateway of fort. This is also again highly decorated image of eagle, uh, Hanumana, then um, uh, Ganesha, and many different animals are depicted around the gateway. The name of this gateway is the Yashwanta Darwaza or Yashwanta Gateway. two large size cannon is uh, located on the northern uh, fortification wall and these cannon uh, brought by britishers in uh, 19th century uh, inscription written on the uh, cannon gives the information that this uh, uh, cannon was built in the yorkshire in uh, 1895 and after after that this cannon Uh, brought here to protect the island of um, Kulaba. Uh, Savitri River or uh, Muru Janjira Fort, Muru Janjira and Padma Padma Durga. Actually, name of that fort is Janjira. Muru village is very close to the uh, island fort. That's why people commonly said that the fort is Muru Janjira. actually another fort is located on the west of janjira fort the name of that fort is padmadurga padmadurga built by chatrapati shivaji maharaj and that time during the chatrapati shivaji maharaj period uh, there are some villages uh, kept for uh, maintenance of that fort that means the uh, for the uh, the salary of the people uh, who who were working on the fort or the uh, their day to day uh, food so this material or expenses for this uh, uh, for this these people came from the uh, uh, revenue of any uh, any village so two or three villages uh, or revenue from two or three villages uh, collect and uh, supply to the any one fort so this kind of uh, uh, structure was developed by chhatrapati shivaji maharaj so chaul village is kept for the padmadurga fort so re uh, revenue which is uh, collected from the chaul village uh, sent to the padmadurga fort or sent to the maintenance of padmadurga fort janjira actually janjira is a big fort located very close to the Danda uh, uh, Rajpuri coastal part of uh, Arabian Sea, and it is uh, approximately 600 meters from the coast. But it is not possible to reach at the port at the time of low tide. You have to reach at the port uh, by boat only. So, but Janjira is not an important port. Actually, main focus was during the medieval period. main focus is on the danda rajpuri this i uh, coastal part of the uh, janjira fort so this part or this village is named as danda rajpuri and danda rajpuri was a major port and trade center at the mouth of mandad creek and a small fort was constructed on the coast of the janjira and today the evidences of this fort is still found at the in, inside the danda rajpuri village
the purpose of construction of the port on the on these port is or purpose of construction of Janjira port is to protect the international port. Gandhara Rajpuri was international port in the medieval period. Uh, traders came here and uh, uh, sell their uh, material at Gandhara Rajpuri port. And the revenue came from the Gandhara Rajpuri port is important for, for the Nijam Shahi dynasty. So that's why to protect the this international port, they built the port on the island. Uh, so these are the remains of Danda uh, Rajpuri port uh, located on the coastline of Ganjira. So see the structure like stepwell is here and um, another Darga is also there, but that Darga may be uh, constructed a uh, few uh, years back. It is, it is not actually the original structure. In the symmetry is also uh, a new structure inside the fold. But these are these walls and this gateway, uh, these remains are the older one and that, were, uh, that was built during the uh, medieval period around in 15th or 16th century. Some structural prints are also seen inside the fold at Tandarajpuri. See the stepwell and there is a moat all uh, built on this stepway to lift the water and this is a water storage and then supply the water to the whole area. See the Janjira fort and the remains of uh, Gandharajpuri fort. Uh, a large huge size mosque uh, was built on the coast uh, on, or on the port <laughs> like very similar to Chaul and Dabur. Similar kind of construction of mosque is also found at Dabur and Chaul. Janjira and Padmadurga, uh, these are the two ports on the coast uh, island located, situated very, very close to each other, but Janjira is very close to the seashore and uh, Padmadurga is approximately 1.8 uh, kilometers from the seashore. See the satellite image of uh, Janjira port. There are different size of bastions located in the fortification wall. Two or three large, huge size of bastions, some medium size bastions, and some are the small bastions uh, located in the wall. Then two large size sweet water tanks. Sweet water tanks are there. Then the palace of Siddhi is at the central part of the port. And there are the other remains inside the port, like moss, then residential area for other uh, uh, people, and uh, cannons on the fortification wall. There are three gateways were built in the fortification wall to enter inside the port. First is from the east, then another is north, and third is on the uh, south. So there are third. There are 18 small and large size bastions in the fortification wall, outer fortification wall. Then uh, uh, the, uh, the names of these bastions were, uh, are written in the, the gazetteer, the Kulava gazetteer. So, like these names are uh, Hulmuk, Araba, Bahadur Shah, Yakuti Khan, Saraja. So, there are many names of these bastions. And two, three bastions are inside the fort. So total 21 bastions are constructed in the fortification wall. So this is a some uh, few uh, pictures or so paintings drawn during the British period. And you can see the, these bastions are covered with a triangular roof. So that triangular roof uh, was constructed during the medieval period because that time when the soldiers or when the uh, uh, guards when stay on this um, semicircular bastion, it was very difficult to um, uh, keep a watch on uh, during the rainy season or at the time of summer. So it, it is very difficult to uh, 
uh, stand here and uh, wait. So these kind of uh, um, triangular roof by using the terracotta tiles they built on the every bastions. But not only this kind of structure on the Janjira, but almost on every fort they built this kind of triangular roof on the uh, bastions. Uh, see, this, this is a uh, earlier structure built before 15th century, this kind of lotus petal structure uh, on uh, Janjira Fort because the date of construction of Janjira Fort goes back to around the uh, 14th century. So, uh, this kind of lotus petal structure you can found at uh, Janjira Fort. This is a sweet water lake moat around the fort to lift the water and circulate inside the port. And this is the main land from where we can get the uh, boat or ship to reach at the uh, uh, Ganjira port. Then another important port, Padmadurga. Before that, uh, 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 I would like to share um, a PPT regarding the Ganjira port. Uh, I will just close this PPT and um, take the another PPT. It is based only on Janjira code. Just a second, it's opening now. Janjira is basically a different state uh, um, and it has a boundary of Janjira state it is uh, very limited from Raigad district and some part of the Ratnagiri district. So northern end of the territory was Undari. Undari was, was under the uh, Janjirekar Siddhi or Jan, uh, Siddhi dynasty and Bankot is the fort on the south or uh, Vijayadurga. Vijayadurga fort uh, was under the Siddhi for a few, few years, not uh, for large time. So the territory goes up to uh, Ratnagiri and Raigad district. So basically history of Janjira state. Um, Janjira is a basically came from the name Jazira. Jazira is a basically island. So there is no definite information about who be the port, Janjira port. In the middle of the 15th century, large number of Abyssinian slaves were working in the army of Bahmani dynasty. So these men were from Arab or El Habish, uh, North, Northeast uh, Africa, commonly known as Habshi. So most of the Habshis came to India as a slave, but uh, they got a higher position in Bahmani dynasty court. So they, the name Siddhi corrupt from Sayyid. And uh, in the end of 15th century, Siddhi Yakut was an admiral, admiral of uh, Bahadur Shah Gilani. He was a son of uh, Bahamani governor at Goa. Perista was a traveler. He, uh, in the uh, Bahamani period, uh, Malik Ahmad was the chief of Zimnar in 1482-83. And he attacked on the Janjira port, but the local fishermen defeated him. And after the decline of Burmani dynasty, the port Danda Rajpuri was under the power of Nijam Shahi in 1490. After an establishment of Nijam Shahi, Malik Ahmad again attacked on the port and defeated the fishermen. So Perim Khan was a commander of uh, Nijam Shahi. Actually, Perim Khan was also a Hapshi and he is also a Siddhi, but he was working under the Nijam Shahi dynasty. He conquered the port and uh, that time the port was constructed by wooden material. So uh, after the uh, construction of fortification wall in 15, uh, 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 sorry, uh, uh, Perim Khan built a port uh, by using the stones and named it as a, uh, after the Perim Khan constructed the fortification wall in 1576. The Mughal ruler Akbar took the Ahmadnagar in 1636 
after the Janjira court was under the Mughal dynasty till 1618. Nizam Shah and dynasty again came in power and Siddhi Shudul Khan took the uh, Sanad or letter from Delhi. And the Siddhi declared himself as a Nawab of uh, Siddhi Janjira in 1619. That means before the uh, birth of Shivaji Maharaj, Janjira declared himself as a Nawab of Janjira. Well, after that, the decline of Nizam Shah dynasty in 1636, the state emerged emerge into Adil Shah dynasty. So, Siddhis of Janjira fought against Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj in middle of the 17th century. After the death of Sambhaji Maharaj, Siddhi started capturing the fort, which were the under the rule of Maratha dynasty. So, 1690 uh, means when Sambhaji Maharaj died. Uh, to 1633 was a peak period of Janjira uh, state. So they were ruled over 22 different forts uh, in that period. And the decline of Janjira state started in 1733 during the campaign of Janjira by Bajira Peshwa first. He took most of the forts in this campaign out of 22 castles, only Janjira, Padmadurga, Dandar Ashpuri, Anjanvel and Golakot forts were remain under the Sujira state. In 1745, Tuvaja Angre took the Gopalgan and Anjadwil also. And Nana Bhannis tried to uh, take the fort in, uh, from Janjira in 1791. Uh, he offered the land to Siddhi near Gujarat, but the uh, British uh, is not uh, British where uh, take the um, uh, British discussed with uh, Janjirika Siddhi and they refused to take the uh, uh, leave the port to Janjir. That's why the port was not under the uh, Maratha still in 1791. So, this is the chronology of uh, Janjira port, early 15th century Abyssinians, then Siddhi Yakut, and in, uh, at the end of 1818, only one port, Janjira, was under the Siddhi. So this is a list of fort under under the Janjirika Siddhi in between 1618 to 1760. So Janjira is a first island fort constructed by uh, Janjirika Siddhi and the fortified island near the Dandarashpuri port. And see again, uh, these are the few British drawings paintings. This is a Danda Rajpuri port, location of Danda Rajpuri port. These are the remains what I have already shown you, these images. Underi port oh, under the Siddhi, Gopalagad district also. This is not an island port. Gopalagad is a coastal port, was under the Siddhi dynasty. Gold court, we can see that Gold court is an island port because the Vasishti Ravi uh, river moves around the port and this becomes an island and the Goa port is located on the top of the hill. So actually this port also was under the Janjira dynasty. So this is the remains of uh, Goa port port. Few cannons, water tank, fortification wall, gateways. Then Padmadurga. Padmadurga is commonly called as the Kasa Fort, because the name, local name of that island is Kasa. Uh, it's, it is located on the Murud Creek, in front of the Murud Creek on the island. And it was built in uh, 16, actually 1679. It is it's not 84, 85. It is built in 1679 um, in the center of the bay, about two miles north of Janjira by Amaratas. So after 25 years, in 1710, Siddhi Surul Khan captured the fort from Marathas in 1710. Then the Peshwa attack on Janjira fort in 1733. That time the Siddhi surrendered and made a treaty with Peshwa. So from that, uh, at that time, the fort came under the Marathas, but actually ruled by Siddhi. So in that treaty, Janjira Padmadurga was remained to Siddhi and the ports such as Birwadi, Tale, Dhusane, 
to hand over to Peshwa, and finally in 1761 it was captured by British. So these are the events of uh, Padmagad Fort. So they have been moved to original PPT. This is the Padmagad Fort. These are the remains. It is this island. Padmadurga is an island fort, and it is divided into two parts: uh, upper fort and lower fort. So, this is the left side. First image is the upper fort, and the gateway is not easily observed from the seashore. Uh, the gateway is facing towards the north, and it is built in in between the two bastions. The upper part of the west end there are the windows for firing cannons so this is the upper fort area upper fort area is a basically residential area and uh, few structural remains are still found inside the fort uh, main gateway and secondary gateway is also in the uh, upper fort there is a rampart for walking on the fortification wall see the width of this rampart is around 7 to 8 feet and it is very easy to firing the guns and cannons from this rampart it is all uh, rampart is located all around the fortification wall and again there is a petal like structure constructed by abyssinians on the fortification wall actually that time there is no need of construction of this kind of structure but uh, they traditionally built this kind of fortification wall these are the barracks built by british when they took the fort from uh, janjirekar siddi and these are two these are two water tanks inside the fort and some structural remains inside it uh, there is an interesting thing uh, outside the fort uh, where the water can reach and uh, at the high tide uh, lime uh, lime was uh, placed in between the two stone during the construction of the uh, this bastion or gateways but the today the strips of that lime came out and the stone gates inside so local people thought that the lime uh, they used the lead and mix the lead with the lime and use in the construction of that bastion but that is not true the uh, today this lime gets hardened and it's uh, very hard you cannot pull this uh, or you cannot take the powder of that lime to the hand you, if you want to take this uh, lime you have to take another stone and hammer onto the lime and then take the sample of that lime so this hardness is because of lead so local people thought that the hardness is because of lead so i am basically from chemistry background i have done my bsc and msc in chemistry and uh, then i have done ma archaeology and phd archaeology so i have took the sample of uh, this line and run the x ray x ray diffraction analysis to identify the remains of lead if it is uh, inside the pit but after the analysis i uh, observed that there is no remains of any lead inside the lime but after that i um, i thought that what, what is the exactly reason of, of hardening that uh, lime so uh, when i go to the um, architectural uh, study that i found that the when you prepared this lime by using the jaggery water then sand and limestone uh, uh, limestone pieces so at that when apply when this lime apply in between the two stone then uh, the curing time of this lime is approaching the uh, curing time of cement is 5 days only and the curing time of lime is 65 years that means after 5 days cement gets hardened and it cannot absorb a single drop of water but in same in case of lime lime started absorbing the water and it continues to absorb the water till uh, 65 years so after uh, in 1818 when british took the fort 
and it uh, takes the food port under their control. After that, no one tried to uh, reconstruct the port or maintain the port. But during the high tide, water came to reach at this part of the uh, port, uh, fortification wall. And the water came to, uh, after every six years, water reached to this level. And the curing process continues till approximately 200 years. So that stone or that line gets hardened due to the overcuring. And that's why today the uh, line is gets hardened. And there is another reaction on the uh, basalt stone. Basalt gets uh, uh, eroded due to the um, uh, hammering of marine water from every six, uh, six hours. So this is the basically the reason of uh, hardening of lime at that uh, place. But there is no any um, lead is used inside the construction of uh, the uh, lime or lime mortar. Uh, next is the uh, another port is Suvarnadurga. It is an another island port that is located in Ratnagiri, Ratnagiri district. And uh, again, this port was constructed by the uh, Shivaji Maharaj on the near, very close to the uh, Dapoli seashore, approximately uh, 2.3 kilometers away from the shore. And uh, speciality of this port is uh, um, high uh, fortification wall of this uh, uh, port is approximately uh, 22 feet high. See the bastions and fortification wall of this port. Uh, you cannot identify the main gateway of the port because of two large size bastions. Uh, facing towards the main gateway and the main gateway is just inside besides this bastions. There are two, uh, some religious uh, structures are uh, observed on the gateway on almost every fort. The image of uh, the you know, Ganesha or image of Hanumana or found on the gateway or the fort, but there is a different Thing which I have observed on this uh, uh, Suvarnadurga port is the image of uh, turquoise is uh, depicted on the step of that uh, uh, port or gateway of this step. But um, I don't know what is the exact reason of the depiction of uh, um, turquoise. Maybe the uh, reason is the stability. Means uh, like the over elephants are the, the symbol of their uh, prosperity. Similarly, Tartoy uh, is a symbol of stability, that's why. But I have found only one image of Tartoy on the port. On any port, there is no image of Tartoy on the gateway. Uh, another thing is the uh, um, image of uh, Numana and Ganesha. Uh, that time people thought that the Humana and Ibiza and Ganesha they are the uh, protector god. They protect the gateway of the port. So today also we uh, kept the image of, uh, depicted the image of Ganesha or photo in, on our, um, uh, in the top of our entrance. So they were, this is basically the protector gods and they protect the gateway of the port. This is another uh, gateway or emergency gateway uh, of Suvarnadurg port. See the series of uh, bastions located on the island. And this stone was uh, carved from the uh, island. It is not bring from the outside. See, these are the water tanks. When these water tanks started excavating, the stone which is excavated from the construction of this uh, water tank used for the fortification wall and the other structures inside the port. Another important port is uh, Sindhudurga. Sindhudurga port is uh, very close to Malavan seashore and located in itself Sindhudurga district. But the stone in this uh, Sindhudurga port is slightly different. So there is a stand, and stone island located uh, near the Malwan coast. Uh, this is not actually a basalt or a black color uh, stone. It is a whitish sandstone. And the island name of that island is Kurte, P-U-R-A-T, Kurte Island. Uh, 
and fort was built on this island with the fortification wall you can measure this fortification wall 2.60 km long fortification wall constructed on this island so this is a bastion and fortification wall at kinduru uh, fort as i said earlier that uh, water tank is an important feature on almost on every fort so actually the um, two three water tanks are located inside the fort name of these water tanks are root bow mid bow and sakra bow bow means a uh, well so these are the sweet water tanks so you know important structure inside the fort at chindigurga uh, is the uh, temple of chhatrapati shivaji maharaj and that temple was built by his son the uh, second son chhatrapati rajaram maharaj uh, in um, 1690 so today this temple is located inside the fort as i said earlier that there is a padma durga a small fort or ruins of fort is located in between the malavan sea shore and sindhu durga fort so this is a small island and it can uh, be connected to the mainland of malavan sea shore here only remains of uh, uh, fortification wall is still on the padmagad fort uh, there is a another one more coastal fort is a uh, vijayadurga and there is a myth about the vijayadurga fort is there was a uh, uh, stone wall constructed below the uh, below the sea and uh, that the fortification wall was constructed by shivaji maharaj so actually that is a myth but uh, uh, indian ocean archaeology um, they have conducted the survey underwater uh, survey at that place and they have written a paper research paper on the uh, wall which was constructed below the ground but after observing the uh, uh, their observations uh, written on the paper uh, i i have written one more paper on the uh, construction of uh, this wall i think it is a myth it is not in the uh, constructed in the reality i will uh, i will show you the some findings of uh, regarding this fortification wall at vijayadurga uh, so vijayadurga fort is located here at the mouth of vagotan river so basically this fort was surrounded by three different forts arepatan devgarh and keshwantagarh so main fort is vijayadurga so these forts are for the protection of vijayadurga so this is a vijayadurga fort and the um, and place uh, untitled place mark is the place where the uh, submarine or the submarine uh, wall was constructed and this is a fort this is pagotan creek the actual the image of uh, is a little fort you can see the large size of triple or double layer bastion is located see this is a one layer of bastion another layer and this is the third layer of bastions on the uh, vijayadurga fort so you can see from this side also eastern side the first fortification wall second layer of fortification wall third layer of fortification wall so eastern part is protected uh, by using this protection wall some cannon balls are still inside the fort then the huge bastions were constructed on the creek side so uh, as a reason for showing this kind of structure uh, at the fort is i am trying to uh, say that this fort is itself uh, um, protected by using this uh, strong fortification wall and bastions so the paper written by uh, some scholars of um, indian ocean archaeology in international journal of uh, nautical archaeology So their findings, they thought that, or they uh, explain in this article that this wall is was constructed in this region below the sea level. So 
think uh, when I discuss uh, with uh, IOC expert and I bring some photographs from them, but they said that we have taken a photograph, but uh, we did not get any clear images underwater. Uh, so these are the structures explored by National Ocean Archaeology. You cannot find any constructed wall to this uh, image. So these are the findings of uh, National Ocean Archaeology. The size, height, width, and length of the wall, and the stones which are used in the construction of the wall. So width is the seven meter, height is three meter, and length is one twenty four meter, and the base of the wall from the present sea level, sea level is eight meter, eight meter. That means it is below five meter. And then, <coughs> sorry. And then the uh, uh, distance from the fort wall is six to hundred meter, and the uh, rock size is <coughs> sorry uh, hundred centimeter by forty by thirty centimeter. The large size block is three point five meter by two point five meter and two point five meter. It is so it is not possible to construct this kind of this size of blocks. And, uh, and it is very difficult to uh, transport this size of blocks from the mainland to ship and then from ship to the original place. So actually these are the strong fortification walls and these are the uh, absence of any stone structure. So IOC uh, expert says that uh, we cannot take the uh, best picture because due to the, some reason, so they prepare a this kind of sketch of the wall. But in this case, we cannot find any um, dress stones and use in the construction work. So it is very difficult to move such a large blocks from one place to another. And the capacity of Maratha ship that time is maximum 500 ton, and this block will be more than 500 ton. See, this is a map provided by IOC expert, and they show that this is the place where the remains of walls are found. But the wall is nearly 60 to 100 meters from the fortification wall, and it was not possible for British Dutch Portuguese ship to reach up to 100 meters, very close to the fortification wall. If they came 100 meters from the fortification wall, then you can say that they will easily capture the fort. So, People which, which are uh, staying inside the fort, they cannot easily uh, allow to came the, uh, the Britishers or enemy very close to the fortification wall. So it is not possible to construct the wall very close to this fortification. So this is the place of the wall, fort, and Babudan. In the war during the British and Marathas, our Portuguese Maratha, Dutch Maratha, they normally attack. They always attack uh, from this part of the creek, and they try to attack from this this part. Okay, they are not. Uh, they are not uh, um, trying to. Uh, just one thing. Lecture, lecture, come here. Uh, then the. Uh, Actually, from uh, they started attacking from this Wagutan Creek area, and they are not trying to um, attack on the western part of the fortification wall. This is historical document gives the information about the attack of British Portuguese and Dutch. Uh, similar kind of natural wall. So after observation, I thought that this is a natural wall or it is a geological formation. We can say that this is commonly called as a dike, and similar kind of dike is observed near the Veneshwar uh, seashore. You can see this dike on the satellite image. See, this is a line. This is look like a wall, but it is not actually a wall. It is a dike located near the Veneshwar. See, this is a white line. It's a dike. The dike came on the uh, main line, and again it goes into the sea. So, length of this uh, dike at Venishore is 2.8 km and similar kind of uh, stones are used or 
observed uh, at the dike in Vaineshwar city. You can see the Vaineshwar uh, dike at Vaineshwar and uh, shape of the stones at Vaineshwar and shape of the stones at Vijayadurga. So we can easily say that these stones are natural stones and these are not constructed in Vaineshwar. See these stones are natural, there is no grey stones are there. Or size of furniture blocks are very similar to Vijayadurga. See the images of the stone. Uh, observing this image, you can easily say that these are the natural stones and are not constructed other stones. So the result of see the image of dike on the coastline or at Kurlai near Devdanda. So the result of this uh, finding is uh, this phenomenon means uh, dike is a phenomenon can be better explained with the help of geology. And uh, on the present beach uh, that is near Vijayadurga, there is an outcrop of compact basalt with uh, excellent development of polygonal joints like this. And uh, because of this joint, the rock weather, weather and basaltic rocks are released. So the present wall-like pattern is also on top of compact jointed basalt with the flat base that have developed due to the wave action. A similar type of rock formation is observed near the various ports on the west coast of uh, such as Khandiri, Suvarnadurga, Jangira, Kurlai, Devgad and Jaigar. We can say that there is this, that is not a constructed wall below the ground. This is a natural phenomenon. So this is about the uh, island ports. Uh, I think I have uh, explained about the total all 11 ports on the west coast of uh, Maharashtra. If you have uh, any question, uh, you can ask it. Thank you, sir, for such a valuable information. Indeed, this was a very important piece of history and the presence what you have discussed with us. Uh, dear participant, if you have any queries, kindly unmute yourself and go ahead with the questions. While people are thinking of their questions, uh, let me have the opportunity to uh, thank Dr. Zoshi for this absolutely fantastic, uh, extensive, and erudite uh, you know presentation, which uh, has fascinated me and also has been kind of uh, educating, engaging, entertaining, all all those kind of things. You know, it is it is very 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 you know it's very uh, very informative. You know. Uh, so thank you very much for that. And you know, one of, I mean, you, I mean, one of the pleading things that passed me was one of the guns that was made in Yorkshire. I, I live in Yorkshire, so uh, you know, so it's called God's own country. We call we call Kerala God's own country. So that's that's God's own country, Yorkshire. So the gun comes from there, and uh, it's interesting that we have these past legacies of uh, uh, the the British, the Mughals. Uh, and of course, our own indigenous kings and uh, kings and rulers. Now, my my thing was my my. I had two kind of very broad questions, uh, and and one one is basically he is. I mean, of course, this is old history, and probably it is not relevant to current strategic uh, needs or whatever. But are the Indian Navy, for example? Mm. Uh, interested in learning more about these forts and if so more importantly i mean i'm always thinking about how we can preserve our history you know how we can make our sites more more relevant to the general public who visit so that they there's a good upkeep there uh, there are charges to visit and people can you know pay visits and learn about our own history if, just from the sake of a lay person you know so are they doing that twofold thing you know are they Doing, making use of it to learn about how 
coastal fortification should be done number one and secondly are they spending any money or you know efforts into making it good the the other question i had uh, was uh, is there any move by the indian government because these these are fantastic sort of historic sites you know uh, what we call as natural heritage uh, also human heritage cultural heritage historic heritage all those kind of heritage words that we can that come to mind and we have the world heritage convention which is now increasingly looking at the coastal regions you know there's world maritime heritage you know section under the uh, world heritage convention of the unesco so is the government pushing because see these things are so good but there are so many more uh, i would say less important places at least i think as an indian less important places around the world which have become world heritage sites but not many sites in india so is the government pushing for those so i i wanted this i to ask you these uh, two fold two fold questions so if if you want to probably shed some light on the, those please okay uh, these four some of these forts are under the archaeological survey of india like uh, um, alibag janjira then sindhu durga suvarna durga padma durga so these forts are uh, national importance fort because they are under the archaeological survey of india then other forts are under the um, bombay port trust or um, uh, any other coast guard so mm-hmm. at that places it is very difficult to uh, conduct the conservation and preservation process mm-hmm. but the folk which are under the asi they are under the process of conservation and people are regularly visited at that port and now i am working in the uh, port conservation committee with maharashtra government so we are trying to uh, take this port in the uh, world as a world heritage site so mm-hmm. the process for world heritage site is start already started so uh, after two months you can see this report on the uh, world heritage website so uh, the end of regarding the conservation and preservation uh, it is very difficult to uh, conduct the conservation process on the island because uh, uh, these ports are located on the west coast and in that area there is a very high rainfall region so uh, conservation process is different it takes a lot of money to go um uh, spend for the conservation but uh, still the archaeological survey uh, has done a good job for the conservation of this fort but now uh, the uh, padmadurga fort or shivanadurga fort uh, and uh, khanderi bunderi they need a conservation okay because these forts uh, are there are only ruins of fortification wall and other structures are still on the fort so this work uh, with um, state government is not uh, um, take the conservation process at that point not asa asi so uh, we are now concentrated on the khanderi and kunderi forts thank you participants any questions from your end questions or suggestions any comment can unmute yourself and go ahead with the question I guess the participants are mesmerized with the forts and still wondering about them, or they must have understood the topic so well. Uh, in case of any further queries, if you all don't want to ask now, you all can put up a message. Yes, you can ask on the WhatsApp also. Yeah, you can provide my WhatsApp number to the students. 
I think thank you. It'll be great. It'll be great if you can share your uh, email and address and your WhatsApp number yeah, with the participants, yeah. and then people can get in touch with you later on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. as far as as far as I'm concerned, I have learned a lot, and I am excited that yeah. you know we have a new resource person in, in our uh, in our series of uh, these activities that we have. We have a we have a question from Sumit Ramchandani. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yes, I have a question. Yes, my question is, uh, how much is how much do you think UNESCO is investing for these forts? Maybe from one aspect or to the other. Uh, actually, uh, not if you find that for UNESCO this. side, UNESCO is not uh, investing money for the uh, conservation or any process. They just give the nomination to our port. We have to invest the port, or our government should have to invest the money. For the conservation and other site management plan and other process, but do you think through not giving any funding for the conservation or anything? Yeah, that that's right. But do you think throughout the process of recognition, or mm -hmm. if they get any kind of award, do you think they at least uh, contribute with some kind of minimum financial amount? They they don't give any amount. For uh, for the uh, nomination process, they only nominate our um, heritage or any port for uh, and their norms are straight here. You can you can, if you go to the, the world heritage site, they give the details of the norms of world heritage. So you have to fulfill these norms uh, for the nomination uh, process. They don't give any money or any funding for the nomination process. Oh, okay. We okay. Have to the money, our government. Okay, so they are more like keen to promote. Correct, correct. Okay. Uh, they just promote our uh, monuments in the world. Got it. Thank you. Any other questions? So since we aren't getting any questions, probably the participants can mail us if they have any queries. Um, so can we continue the session? Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Sachin Joshi sir for his valuable time and sharing with us uh, such an important and a vast topic. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for you. taking out your time. Thank you, thank sir, you. for being there. Thank you, Dr. Zachi. Yes. Thank, thank you. you to all the participants. Uh, small announcement. Tomorrow is the last session. Uh, session will be conducted by uh, Dr. Ram Boj on living with the oceans. And that will be followed by a overall knowledge assessment test. The test will be based on all the 10 sessions which we have conducted which was started from 20th till tomorrow. And the certificate will also be given further, uh, will be mailed to the participants. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being there. See you all tomorrow. Thank Actually, you. The link will be sent tomorrow itself. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.